Tesla has their own um, R&D group working on material science, things that we would never do in a, in a normal uh, OEM, never. Uh, we would never go and develop our own aluminum. They're not stupid. They're not stupid at all. They're, nobody can catch up because they're not going to stay still. They're not static. They're not static. Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Today we're talking about Tesla engineering, manufacturing and technology with Sandy Munro via an interview he did with a Korean publication by the name of Mint. Link in description to the original video and article if you speak Korean. Awesome. If not, well, that's what this video is for. Sandy Munro, who, for those of you who aren't familiar, is the automotive manufacturing expert of experts. We're detailing Tesla's engineering advantage, what they're doing differently, how far ahead they are, and if it's possible for anyone to catch up. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it's not. So let's get into the video, but first, hey guys, if you're in the US and you'd like to help out the channel and get a free stock, check out the link in the description to Webull. If you open a new account and fund it with $100, you'll get a free stock valued up to $1,600. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. The major strengths that Tesla has is um, uh, batteries, electric motors, um, uh, and electronics. Oh, is that all? Um, their electronics are superior to everyone, maybe by five to 10 years. Uh, their electric motors are lighter than everyone else's. Um, they, have, um, they have put um, some magic ingredients into the, the steels and the aluminums. And uh, so uh, they, have, they have things that we don't see anywhere else. Their magnets are better than everyone else's. They have uh, ingredients and alloys that no one else has. We, we, don't, we don't really understand, um, we don't really understand why these extra little ingredients, mostly they're rare earth materials. Uh, we don't understand why they've got them in there because uh, there's not much of these, of these materials. It takes uh, two or three times to, uh, to uh, uh, scan the product in order to, uh, in order to find these, these small, small uh, uh, percentage of alloy inside them, but they do make a difference. And that's why Tesla's motors are lighter, but they put out more power. One other thing you should know too, um, the um, Tesla has their own um, R&D group working on material science, things that we would never do in a, in a normal uh, OEM. Never. Uh, we would never go and develop our own aluminum. It's worth taking a pause just to let the magnitude of these statements from Sandy Munro really sink in. Tesla, an automotive manufacturer, is doing things, developing new materials, cutting edge material science, okay? Making new things to make things with. No other automotive manufacturer is doing this. This one aspect is a microcosm of why Tesla is so far ahead. Big brain engineers, great leadership, pretty much with a gun to their head saying, listen, dickhead, find a better way to do stuff or you don't have a job. And since we have such an inspiring mission, you're not going to get butthurt about me putting a gun to your head saying be better and do more with less because we need to. Oh, okay, no problem. Now, I don't want to labor the point, but this is really important. Tesla, an automotive manufacturer, is doing cutting edge material science, inventing new materials which they can use to manufacture products in better, faster, cheaper, lighter, more efficient manners. And this is just one example of how their engineering prowess and resourcefulness is being applied to further their mission. They're 10 years ahead of everyone else when it comes to casting okay. and the housings, um, and um, probably five years when it comes to uh, the electric motor design because those are easy to 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 catch up on right so tesla is depending on what you're talking about five to ten years ahead of the competition now if this was your uncle after a few too many bourbons babbling about something he didn't know anything about you could be very dismissive of these comments but it's sandy fucking munro okay he knows more about automotive manufacturing than anyone else on planet earth does sandy think anyone can catch up to tesla no not possible <laughs> This is like a, like like a running race. If you give someone, um, if you give someone, say, uh, if you're if you're uh, if you're running um, 100 meters, and you say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna spot you, uh, I'm gonna spot you um, um, 50 meters. Go. 
even if even if it's grandma in a wheelchair, she's going to win. <clears throat> Tesla is not going to be sitting still. That's where people are wrong. Ten years on what you have now inside of the uh, inside of the, the the Tesla vehicles. Is Tesla going to stop doing any R and D? Is Tesla going to do? Uh, is, is Tesla going to tell their engineers, okay, now we want to everybody stop so that the rest of the world can catch up? No, they're not stupid. They're not stupid at all. They're, nobody can catch up because they're not going to stay still. They're not static. They're not static. I don't know about you, but I think Sandy's message is pretty clear. I'm very curious just to think through this as a thought experiment. What kind of conversations do you think are going on inside the boardrooms of existing automotive manufacturers? Surely, at least the competent ones, <laughs> um, so that might not be very many, will understand that Tesla is eons ahead and that their lead is accelerating. So the question then becomes, what are they going to do? Do they think, okay, well, we're in trouble, we should start moving in this direction? Or are they thinking, you know what, I'm going to be retired in seven years. Let's just keep making these internal combustion engine cars so the profits are still there for a few years and then I'm out of here, got my retirement package. Who cares what happens then? Because here's the deal. Every existing automotive manufacturer right now is the Titanic headed for a visible iceberg. There is a collision about to happen and the ship will sink. Internal combustion engine vehicles, they're dead. We're seeing the transition take place, the disruption. The question is, are they even going to try? And I'm not sure they will. It takes courage as a CEO, as a leader, as a manager, as somebody to make a decision that's going to pay off in two, three, five, ten years time. And knowing that you're still never going to catch the leader, do you even try? Here, I'll give you a, an example. Outside uh, on my floor is, um, is the uh, um, uh, Tesla Model Y, the Model 3, the Bolt. The BMW i3, a bunch of bits from uh, Jaguar and whatever. I got lots of stuff here, right? Okay, so we have all that, all that, that material, and we look at it, and we say, "Wow, this is good. That's good." But everybody else is way, way behind. So we look at what Audi put out, and we know that there was things that we saw there that they could, that they could change. And that that Audi now is what uh, three years old. How much did they change? How much on their products have they changed? Announced that they've changed. How much? Zero. Zero. And the reason for that is because you have to go through a change board inside of a inside of your factory or your company. You have to go through a change board, and everybody has to look at it and go, "Hmm, I don't know. That could be risky. What do we do about our investments? How about the floor space that we're going to need?" And you know what happens? They die. They die good ideas die you know when i started this channel i never thought i would be talking about evolution on a video about tesla but hey there's a first for everything now just a warning if you're a snowflake and you melt easily please stop watching this video right now i'm not joking okay if you're about to get butt hurt because i say something that offends your delicate sensibilities stop watching the video you and I are both the latest version of a product of millions of years of evolution via natural selection. Environmental pressures cause only the strongest to survive. When there's a cold spell, there's less food available, etc. When times get tough, those who are most suitable to adapt and survive in their environment do. They pass on their genes. Everybody who isn't well adapted, out of the gene pool. We are seeing the same process happen in the automotive industry, but here's the key. You can picture the traditional automotive industry as an experiment in evolution through natural selection. The truth is, over the last century or so, there hasn't been an enormous amount of selection pressure. There's enough food, customers for existing species, automakers to survive and thrive, no problems. However, very difficult for a new species to enter this environment, this ecosystem, and change things up, okay? There's a lot of pressure if you want to start out and become a new automaker, but if you're an existing species, everything's fine. Then along comes Tesla. We can think of Tesla like an apex predator entering a new environment. It's not their intent to kill and maim and destroy every other living organism that exists. However, they have an enormous intellectual advantage tools, technology, ways of improving things. So unlike the traditional automotive manufacturing industry, which has been existing in a pretty stable, safe, comfortable ecosystem, there's enough food, resources, not a huge amount of selection pressure to force things to improve and change, etc. We now have Tesla, the apex predator. 
Much like Homo sapiens entering the scene a few hundred thousand years ago with tools, technology and language were able to hunt animals to extinction not because that was their goal but because they were hungry. And because humans were so successful, there's less resources, food in the environment for everybody else. They end up dead. Okay? Human beings entered the scene and had an enormous advantage and the advantage was this. We can actually think and improve and develop tools and technologies that allow us to accelerate the process of evolution, not through natural selection, but through design. This is exactly what humans have done. We've released the shackles of evolution through natural selection. We're now evolving with our tools and technology. We're superhuman. I mean, if I have any question, I can find the answer in like two seconds by Googling it. I'm literally a fucking genius compared to a human or 50 years ago. This is how I conceptualize the traditional automotive industry. They've been living in an ecosystem without much selection pressure for many years. There hasn't been a huge amount of evolution. Along comes Tesla, the equivalent of a human being, and suddenly, with their gigantic fucking brain, start forcing the company, their products, to evolve far beyond what the natural environment would have induced. Man, that was a serious rant. What was my point? Oh, that's right. Tesla's arrived on the scene. Traditional automakers are going the way of the woolly mammoth, the dodo, and the Neanderthal. Wait, 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 I forgot. I was supposed to offend some people, wasn't I? Let me dig up a clip from Peter Atkins. I think he can sum this up perfectly. And before we watch this clip, let me just give you a quick primer. There's a method to my madness here. The first group that is discussed, imagine this as people who think Tesla is an automotive company because they look like one and they haven't really thought critically whatsoever. The second group, the only other group discussed, is people that kind of understand that Tesla's a little bit more than an automotive company, but they don't really know what they're looking at because they've inherited their beliefs from other people. Somebody told them this about Tesla, oh, okay, that makes sense. They don't understand why they believe what they believe. They don't have good reasons for believing what they believe. So let's watch this clip. I think there are two sorts of religious scientists. One is the creationist, someone who believes that everything was created and what we're seeing is just what the creator left around and I regard that simply as uh, intellectual excrement of the first order and I didn't think we need to worry about it any further. The, the second sort, the one that we do have to take seriously, are the believing scientists, the, the people who are really making an intellectual effort to coordinate their system of beliefs with the tide of scientific discoveries which are slowly pushing them further and further back into metaphor. And the third group is those that have used a critical eye to look at, understand and infer what they're actually seeing before their very eyes. What Tesla is, not what someone else told them what it is, not what it's supposed to be, what it actually is. I know this was a pretty whack analogy, but it's the best way that I can sort of explain my thinking on the way that people are looking at Tesla at the moment. I see so many creationists out there who believe the most ridiculous stuff. They actually think Tesla is an automotive manufacturer. They make cars. They think they're exactly the same as GM or Ford or Toyota or VW. No matter what you say, it's just just let them, let them believe that. That's fine. The same people you present some fossil evidence go, uh, what about this dude? And like, oh, uh, God put it there. Then you've got the second group of people who've heard Tesla's a tech thing. Maybe they're part of Fang. Like, okay, great, cool. Yeah, I get it. They're, yeah, they're a tech company because someone told me they are not because they've actually looked at this and totally understand it. These are the religious folks. They probably don't believe the earth is actually 6,000 years old, but they do have some beliefs that are on very shaky ground. And then the third group of people, no preconceptions, clean slate. Let me just look at what I'm seeing before my eyes, first principles, and go from there. I think these, this third group are the people that really get Tesla. So let's get back to Sandy Munro explaining how Tesla's products continue to evolve at an unnatural pace. That car came out in about March early March. They're installing a one-piece casting that takes those two pieces and the two big pieces and two small pieces all in one now. How many months? April, May, June, July, August. Five months. And I couldn't get something done in five years when I was at Ford. I could not get it through the change it was a good idea. It's something we should have done. No, we, the investment, Sandy, you don't understand. The, we'd have to throw those dies away. They don't care. Now, as I've mentioned, Sandy Munro is an expert of the automotive industry. He has decades of experience and insight and understanding. And these are the kind of conversations that go on. This is the kind of thinking, oh, no, we can't change. It's so hard. Oh, my God, there's so much risk. No, everything's safe. Look, we've been surviving in this environment for years. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Sandy's like, guys, there's a new predator in town. Bigger, smarter, faster, more agile, moving quicker than you. You're going to have to up your game or you're going to be its next meal. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's too hard. Dude, you're going to get eaten. Oh, but it's so hard. 
okay, well, you're just going to get eaten then. The bottom line is that the wide automotive market is just letting things happen, whereas Tesla is making them happen as fast as possible. Let's hear Sandy's opinion on Elon Musk before and after tearing down some of the Tesla vehicles. Never really cared for him before. I always thought he would yak yak too much blowing and, you know, making noise. And, uh, and I saw the first two or three cars that they bought. And these things are junk. But then when we got the Model 3 and I saw the electronics and the motor, it, oh, man, I was really interested then. And when we tore apart the Model Y, I was totally blown away. I mean, it, sincerely, that, that car is... Uh... Remember, Sandy Munro, expert, and he is blown away. And I mean that. Not they're a bit above average. Kind of impressive. Decent. Good. Great. No, no. Blown away. This matters. And maybe it doesn't have good fit and finish. So what? When they start bringing out the German cars and the Japanese cars, and even the car in Texas, they'll, uh, they'll have that nailed. And then what? Then what's the, what are the OEMs going to do? What are they going to say? I don't know. I think, uh, I think 10 years, they got a 10 years leap, and maybe if they wait five more years, they'll have a 15-year leap. It's hard to say. Translation, nobody is catching Tesla. Now let's hear what Sandy had to say regarding accusations that Munro and Associates are paid by Tesla to blow smoke up their ass. Disgruntled people or something. Maybe they just want to make press to make press. And these people are saying that I'm on the take. I mean, uh, you know, Elon Musk is paying me. Nobody pays me. They can buy our reports and whatnot, but they cannot buy our opinion, period. And now Sandy's thoughts on whether or not he's sad to see the internal combustion engine vehicle going extinct after spending decades of his career working on this particular technology in the automotive industry. Mm -mm, not at all. Why should I? I mean, this is like saying I like horses. What for? They eat and poop everywhere. I, and they step on your foot and bite. I mean, I don't care about horses. Why would I care about uh, engines? They pollute. So that's kind of uh, the way it is. Uh, times progress. If you don't pro progress, people look at you like, uh, <clears throat> you know, you, you can't see the future or you can't be dragged into the future. I think this is a great note to end things on. Sandy Munro is clearly impressed with how quickly, efficiently and intelligently Tesla's engineering are adapting, evolving, innovating and finding new disruptive ways to do more with less. The flip side is he's painfully aware that the traditional automotive industry are counting down their days. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget your free stocks with Webull and Stake using the links below. Deposit $100 in your Webull account, you'll get a free stock valued up to $1,600. Bucks and Stake, spin the roulette wheel, you'll either get Nike, GoPro, or Dropbox. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server, and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.